the patients if he bought you, he won't be gone. Over to you, Linda. Lovely, thanks, Julia. So, um, my name's Linda, and I'm so delighted to welcome every single one of you into our Cygnus Cafe. Cygnus Cafe has been running for six and a half years now through the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. And um, we're so delighted to have always had such a wonderful um, array of speakers talking on all sorts of holistic topics. And today is no exception. So very, very pleased to welcome back the wonderful Julie Berg who is an incredibly talented naturopath. She has lots of other strings to her bow. She has lots and lots of talents and training and hours of study behind her, but she does work very intuitively too. So it's always a joy to speak to Julie. And especially at this time, as we head into autumn and we are possibly thinking about how we can help ourselves, how we can build our own immunity up and uh, just ensure that we stay healthy and well. So very, very wonderful to have you with us, Julie. So over to you. Thank you, what a wonderful welcome. I'm, doing, I'm blushing. Um, so, yeah, so I'd like to start today with just a moment of silence, uh, if it's possible. Just, I know we may have some of us come out of the healing minute, um, but I just think it uh, it grounds us to uh, stop going up, come back down to earth, put our listening ears on and our open hearts and uh, and just perhaps um, ask that we can uh, receive something for ourselves today. So just please, if that's all right with you all, I'll just take a moment, please. Okay. That's never long enough. So thank you very much for having me back. This is part three. I'm hoping to do parts, ever ending parts. Um, and, and as Linda so very kindly said, is that uh, I have a wealth of uh, years of studying clinical practice in, um, in healing, healing humans and healing self. Um, and so I'd like to share some of that to you today. And I think anybody who heard part one and two would have known that um, about 30 years ago, I had my very, very first shiatsu treatment um, and, and it, uh, it was for pain. It was for um, endometriosis pain, um, incurable pain, apparently, incurable disease, apparently. Um, and, um, and it inspired me at some point, uh, after a very long story, of actually deciding to study that myself. And during that study, one of the teachers was a naturopath. I got excited and interested in naturopathy. I started spiritual healing during the period of three years of studying shiatsu. And uh, that study went on, naturopathy, naturopathy nutrition study carried on the end of shiatsu. Then I realized it wasn't mainstream enough and I uh, quickly encouraged by, by someone to go into acupuncture and that's led to an array of studying through the Guild of Naturopathic Urologists into herbalism, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And I've just finished a master's in Jungian psychology. So um, today I thought, well, how am I gonna mix all that up and, and, and chit chat to you guys? And I thought, well, I'll tell you what I did think is that I'll, I, I can keep an eye on the chat. So if you have any questions as, as we go, rather than it be like a Judy lecture, I thought it could be more integrative. Um, and so maybe if you want to ask any questions along the way, if I can, I'll try to, um, I'll try to answer them. And so um, what I thought as we're in autumn, uh, we're very much in autumn, aren't we? Um, and with that, if we think about that in terms of naturopathic medicine, and we think of that in terms of uh, Chinese medicine, that is the metal element in Chinese medicine, um, in the five element theory of Chinese medicine in acupuncture. And we use that a lot in shiatsu, and we use that a lot in naturopathic medicine. So there's a lot of crossover in these modalities, in these wise ancestral modalities that, that if you realize um, as you go through your lives, and I'm sure there's more wisdom, distilled wisdom in this room than, than I could ever imagine. I'm sure all of us put together could um, do amazing things and write many a book. 
So I know I, I might, it might, I hope it doesn't feel like I'm preaching to the converted, but um, same time, hopefully we'll, re we'll all receive something new from each other today. Um, so I, I could talk about autumn and what we might want to consider naturopathically and how we treat ourselves and care for ourselves during autumn. And so very briefly, we will do that. I, um, and I know Linda will attest to this, that, I, that, that the huge bottle of herbs that I sent her, I just don't sell myself enough on these talks. So, cause last time I just chatted away and I didn't even, I, I forgot to say, oh, by the way, you can ring me if you need my skills or my, my help or my services. So today I want to say, get yourself a bottle of herbs. I'll post them to you, they're phenomenal. And of course we all know about things like echinacea and elderberry, but there's lots and lots of reasons why we might want to take a certain um, herbal uh, tinctures and herbal work at this time of year, because the, the metal element in, in Chinese medicine is, is, is ruled by the lung and large intestine. And the lung hates dryness and autumn is the dry season. So we will see, of course, cold seasons uh, around this time. And ironically, everyone's having flu jab. And so, I mean, I'm not suggesting we don't need to have flu jabs, but I'm saying that that puts the body under a little stress at this exact time. It would be better to do it at a different time. But um, we want to also uh, look at um, how we can support our lung and the lung is supported with moisture. Um, we might want to start eating a bit differently warmer foods if we look at what's growing at the moment seasonally it's all the orange foods it's the pumpkins the swedes the carrots uh, the butternut squashes um and so making a soup or stew with those with maybe a little cayenne in it if you can tolerate a little warmth that would be supportive and we start to drink our lemon water that i rave on about warm and we start to have warm milk if you take milk with your cereal as opposed to straight out of the fridge and so we we want to encourage the digestive fire to to have less work to do so that would be um how we how we might think about autumn from the point of view of supporting ourselves naturopathically speaking um I feel today though very drawn to speak to you about um what is going on in our time and how we as healers or lay people are going to heal ourselves. Uh, and so, you know, eating seasonally ge geographically goes without saying, but let's take, for instance, we know that trauma is something that's been talked about massively outside. It is the time now to speak of trauma. And Linda mentioned um, about iridology and being able to see the difference between one eye and the other other eye and, and, and how one relates to the parent different parent traumas or, or different parents uh ancestral uh myasins they call them in homeopathy so it's like what you've come in with and what you've come in with is not just toxicity or strengths or um challenges it's also uh levels of trauma because we do know that we're living in an ancestral trauma uh, um, world that as healers, we're trying to potentially consider healing, but we have to start with ourselves. And so many of us, we're probably healing ourselves. We've probably done a fabulous job or so we would tell ourselves. Um, but if, and this is where I want to encourage anyone who's listening to consider how they may heal their trauma. We may start with just asking you to eat seasonally and geographically, take some supplements, take some herbs, and that will ground us. That will ground us to a place where we can have the willpower to get to the next stage. And the next stage, as we know as healers, will be, you know, we, we heal the physical. So we can feel the heal the physical or feel the physical. We can heal the physical by what we eat and what we do exercise, rest, sleep, you know, we can look at our energy levels, but how do we heal the mental, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and beyond? And of course, so many of us have said, well, yes, you know, I've looked after my emotional healing. I know exactly what I've got to do uh, intellectually and mentally. Um, you know, I get enough sleep, maybe I have masses of energy, maybe it's brilliant energy, um, but, if we, this is, this is my considered opinion, is that if, there's a saying actually, I'll just go off, off, off piste here. There's a saying, I've got it on my wall over there and it says, blessed are the cracked for they let in the light. 
and and I was just listening to um, somebody talk about trauma, collective trauma and ancestral trauma. And we are the cracked, are we not? We are the cracked of ancestral trauma. All those, all those, all those cracks. So I remember being at a gig, I used to be a jazz singer and uh, I remember being at a gig and, and somebody at the end of the gig came up and gave me that postcard. And she said, that's you that is. And I thought, what a cheek. I said, meant to be a compliment that I'm cracked. But this is what I see healing as. I see it as that I'm looking at my cracks to let out the light, to let in the light and to let out the light. And if I'm able, and I'm not sure I'm being very coherent in my um, delivery at this, at this uh, point, but I have in my head, I know what I want to say, but it may not be coming out. Anyway, I shall endeavor to try. So um, I did write some notes here, which of course I shan't even, I shan't even pretend that I'm looking at them. But it was, how do we let out that light? How do we let the light in? How do we let it out? How do we, how do we, we all send it out for, you know, distant healing. And then there's the wounded healer. Who heals the healer? How do we heal the healer? Why are we healers in the first place? And that's a huge existentialist question, isn't it? But it's something that, 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 that I feel strongly, collectively, it's important to look at. I think that we want to be informed about our own trauma and then aware of our own trauma. And so we can look at what we eat in, in autumn and we can look at how I might tap in that I'm okay and I'm enough, you know, and I'll just get by today, will I? Um, and then we can start to heal it because until we start to recognize what those cracks deliver, we can't heal it. We can only heal what we're looking at and what we're aware of. And that's where I want to go back into naturopathy, for example. So we have, um, you know, we, 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 you know, we have this uh, medical profession that heals us if we need our blood tests and our scans and our medicines. Thank God that heals us. That's, 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 that's great for pathologies, for diseases. And then we have the integrated approach to medicine, which is really about healing the parts that aren't yet seen broken, the cracks. So we have to work on illuminating those places. If we don't illuminate those places, that's where disease will ensue. So if you think about it, oh, well, look, I, there's, a, there's a saying, isn't there, um, that the, through our pain, we will feel our journey. So, you know, we learn our journey through our pain. So many of us are, you know, we might have a bit of arthritis, we might have a bit of digestive problems, we may get headaches, we may feel tired. If we're going to unravel that as a naturopath, you're going to have to um, work with somebody who we're able to trust and that trust grows with time. And we may start this process of looking at your cells by giving you nutrition or diet changes or gentle exercise. We may look at where the imbalance is in your life. But if we're going to... Um, really uh, in, illuminate those places, we first have to feel them and we have to feel the places we're not looking at. The, the, the thing that stops us getting well is basically our defense. Um, and that's an important place to hold if it's there. We don't try and drag it, drag it away. And in that defense, that's, that's, that's where the trauma is. That's where we need to heal. If we don't heal the trauma, we're just plastering over the crack and then the light can't get in. And that's what we need to do is we need to have that light let in. So my job is to support or try to support um, everybody's journey from cell to spirit and everything along the way. And that's what my life's work has been about. Uh, not that this really is about me particularly, because for me, it's just a channel of information that flows out so that somebody can hear and heal their life. Because I think if we collectively sit there and send out healing every day, um, we perhaps are only sending it out and uh, perhaps we're not doing enough sending it in. And that may be trauma that's causing us to think that we can heal everybody else and not really have the skills or knowledge and how to heal ourselves. So people, and often that's fear, that's fear that stops us healing ourselves. So. 
So how can how I don't know if anybody's got any questions about any particular particular things, but um, you can just put them in the chat because I can see them as we go. If I'm one of the signs of the wounded healer, and one of the signs of trauma is that I'm trying to show my strength. So I've been doing this all my life. I've been doing all this learning, all this intellectualizing, all this self-healing, all this curing myself of incurable diseases, all my outliving the length of time I was given to live and all of this I've been doing so I can sit here today with you guys. And it never occurred to me, and has only recently through the work with trauma has occurred to me that it's the weaknesses. It's, the, it's not the pain we need to go into and look at what that's trying to tell us. It's the bit we don't feel. It's, it's, it's illuminating those cracks. It's the bit we don't feel that we need to ask ourselves, where is that? So I would welcome you all to just try something with me. And, and if anybody feels, um, I hate the word triggered, but you know, if anybody else feels a little bit, that's good. That means we've hit something, but uh, you know, and we can hold that, we can hold that space. That's the whole point of this work is that we hold the space. We hold the space so it feels safe. So even if you don't, if you, if, even if anybody's feeling a little bit negative to, to, to anything that's going on for them, just, just accept that you're feeling negative to anything that's going on for you. It's the answer to everything is acceptance. So I just want to ask you all to perhaps for a minute, uh, close your eyes and just imagine, I think I've done this before with you guys, but imagine the most love you've ever felt. It might be the birth of a baby, it might be cuddling a puppy, I think I've done this with you all before, but I wonder where you feel that in your bodies, that immense love, that immense happiness, that immense joy, that's that feeling of peaceful bliss. I hope you all have, have are able to feel that some time in your lives, you must have had at least a, a crack of that light. Now, if anybody could put their hand where they feel that feeling, or if you could place your hands where you feel that feeling, and and just hold that that sense now that's your that's your welcome that that is your welcome point that's the bit that when somebody's standing in front of you or you're working with a patient client or you're in a position to just ask yourself do i trust this situation you will feel that place that says this is safe and this is how we start to work with trauma the not so now we all know actually the majority of you actually on your heart and and that's it, it, there's no right wrong here it's where you feel it so but of course it is a heart center isn't it and there is a secondary heart center i'm told but I, what do i know about chakras um i do know they're there though uh energy centers where we are just little vortex of energy centers ourselves aren't we i'd like you to now uh, and, uh, and and not to upset anybody but i'd like you to imagine a time when you felt really uncomfortable and when you perhaps felt unsafe or unsure, you've known someone's lying to you, or you really don't feel confident and happy. Where do you feel that in your bodies now, momentarily? Can you get a sense, put your hands where you feel uh, that horrible, yeah, guts, head, Can't see where everybody else is, but it doesn't matter. Somewhere down there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Now that's what we call our warning, our warning signal. So what a beautiful thing that our body will never lie to us. You know, there's lots of books written on it now. The body holds a score, the body says no. There's loads of books on written about it. It's basically written about trauma, isn't it? And this collective trauma awareness that is, is now of our time we have to open up a dialogue to, or we don't have to, you don't have to, I have to. Um, so um, now why do I show you that? So I don't want to leave you all feeling like in your uncomfortable place, but imagine putting your hands in that uncomfortable place again. And just imagine that you're, 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 you've got a, 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 a what, does that, what does that feel like to you? Is it a physical thing? Does it have a color? Does it have a shape? Does it have a texture? Does it, does, it, does it have a word? Does it have an emotion attached to it? And this would be the work that we would very kindly and gently start to develop with you 
um, perhaps not if you're in immediately deep bereavement, perhaps not if you're in immediate trauma, if you just come back from war, but perhaps as we've developed a process step by step of getting you to a well enough place, which might mean we've spent a couple of years working with seasonal eating habits, or we might have spent um, time working with herbs or nutrition. We might spend the time just getting you to a place where we can let the light in the cracks. Uh, and let go some of the defenses, which are basically just fear, but it's okay to have those defenses, that's what's kept us alive. So this is not perhaps work for, for the beginner, but I'm looking at most people who are far from beginners, and uh, sorry on Facebook, hello Facebook people, uh, I'm sure they're not beginners either, but it's, 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 not, it's, not a, it's not a place we get to, it's not a box we tick, we're all, we're all, in, we're all in this together. So and I don't want to leave you in a place of fear and anger and upset, but I wanted to show that so that if we could just all now tap that away and just say, ah, I'm enough, I'm safe and I'm okay. I do love a bit of tapping. I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm safe and I'm okay. Do you know, I was speaking to somebody recently and, and working with that uh, tapping thing and you know, I don't know if you've ever, many of you are therapists, I appreciate that, but um, I know myself in my deepest traumas, uh, when I didn't even know I was traumatized, um, I had probably 10 therapists on the go. You know, I'd have psychotherapy, I'd have a Shetz practitioner, I'd have a herbalist, an acupuncturist, I'd have healing every week. At one point I was probably in four or five different treatments a week. I was so traumatized, I probably couldn't even receive any of it talk about overhealed, but it's, it's one of the signs of trauma is that we seek everything and we throw everything at it. And, it, and it's like pebbles in the pond, it becomes a sort of collective mess. And, um, and, and that may be happening, I know it's happened to me, it may be happening. And so one of the great things about working with somebody who does naturopathy is that they tend to collate everything. Having a naturopath is like having a really good doctor who used to look in your eyes and look at your tongue and ask you how you're feeling and how the kids are, who used to take time to sit with you and talk with you and, and listen and, and hear what's going on and not just throw some antidepressants at you and some sleep and tablets. And, you know, if we look at all the things that I, I cheated somebody recently, he had 12 medications a day. And dare I add any more nutrition to that? There's what more pills. And when I looked at it, I thought, if this, person isn't ill they would, they would be ill from the 12 medications the excessive and that's the pebbles in the pond isn't it we just throw one pebble in and one medication does what and then we have another medication to deal with the side effect of that medication and it's just incredible one of the hardest things uh, and it's not my job to take people off medication but i do think it is our our our, our request for us to ask our doctors if we can reduce our medications or do we need quite as many types of medications? So if we're going to the supermarket to buy meat, we don't go look in the veg section. So if we're going to the doctors, we've got to accept that what we're going to get is medications, blood test scans, and hopefully life-saving surgery eventually, if the wait list isn't too long. But, um, you know, or we've got a lot of money to pay for it. So that's where the naturopath comes in. The naturopath is basically the possibility of a first doctor it's the person that knows you and the person that can see things long before they're coming and can treat you when they come. I would say that nine out of 10 times I'm, I would treat somebody, there would be no need for medication. Now, of course, by the time we've met somebody who's on 12 medications a day, there's very little hope for me. The gentleman was, I think, um, 88 years old. So, you know, what am I gonna do for an 80 year old man with 12, 12 different medications? Well, I, I, I know what I did. I, I, I took two away because two of them were nutrition. I wouldn't be going to the butcher asking for veg, so I wouldn't be going to my doctor to ask for nutrition. So just because you're anemic, doesn't mean to say you have to take iron from the doctor. If you came to your naturopath, I'd be asking you why you're anemic and look at why you're anemic before just throwing iron at you. And that's the paper over the crack, isn't it? We don't want the plaster over the crack. Um, but it's not just about more pills and more potions, more lotions. The healing has very little to do um, with the, um, the physical cells. 
in my opinion. We, we obviously start there because if we can get someone motivated to feel more, they've got more energy, to feel like they sleep better, to feel like they've got more inspiration. I mean, the whole point of my talk, I did write it down. The whole point of my talk was to inspire and to educate and to inform and to leave you inquiring. Because if you're inquiring about how those cracks are letting in the light and how we're going to integrate then we're, we're healing collectively. Um, and for me, that is how it, how, how it is. I'm just looking at the time. Um, I could go on and on and on and on and on about um, trauma and the wounded healer. And um, the one thing I would say is that if we were looking at, uh, so, so we, we go to a naturopath and we think we're just gonna get some pills and some herbs. Um, and we might be pleasantly surprised at what else we find out about ourselves. It's a bit like the welcome and the warning signal. That's powerful stuff to learn if we can, uh, you know, if we can live in that. But what do we do? What do we do when we, um, you know, when we find out these things, how do we integrate them and how do we process them? That's with the help of someone who you trust and who can hold the space for you so that we healers are healed. Because so many of us hide behind our spirituality. It's just another addiction, you know? People are addicted to sugar, they're addicted to booze, they're addicted to people, they're addicted to exercise, they're addicted to all kinds of manner of things. And one of our addictions is actually hiding, hiding in, in, in spirituality as well. Sorry, sorry to say that. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it can be true for some people. Some of this you will delete, doesn't mean anything to you. Some of it you might be interested by. So one of the things I did in the last four years is to work with um, Jungian psychology. And one of the fascinating things about Jungian psychology is that it works with dreams. And one of the ways we unravel people's trauma is through dreams because the subconscious only will allow things to come when you're ready. And so some people may go, some people may say, I never dream, never dream. And uh, they start work with a naturopath and suddenly they can start getting dreams. Because the bit of us that wants to be healed, the bit of us that wants to let the light in through those cracks is immense. Because guess what that light is that's coming into those cracks? It's, that's right. So when we're asking ourself and our higher self to heal, we get the messages slowly but gradually. And we're inspired and we're inquiring. And that is, 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 well, that's the existentialist argument, isn't it? This is what we're here for. What else are we here for if not to heal? But heal thyself, healers. Um, I, I don't know if that's a good place to stop, to start, or to, uh, I don't know how long I've been going for, because I've been waffling for yonkers. Um, has anybody got any questions or anything? Does that help? to start the question process now, maybe, Linda? Yeah, that would be absolutely fine, Julie. So if, if anybody out there has, has any questions, then yeah, this is your moment because Julie is here. So, um, so yeah, get your questions in, don't be shy. And of course the question might be, where do I find a naturopath? Or how do I get hold of me? Uh, you know, my, 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 before I can, can't see any questions yet, but so I'll waffle on for a bit longer. My, my experience with, with this is um, because I have so many hats that I wear, people come for acupuncture, for example, and they don't realize that they're going to get a conversation eventually about trauma. And they're like, whoa, trauma. I only want you to some, stick some needles in me or um, maybe, align my hips or deal with that pain in my foot or those headaches I'm getting and um, it's a very difficult job to wind that whole story in rather than compartmentalize because that is the problem with western medicine isn't it is that it compartmentalizes and completely doesn't completely misses the mark and so my work is is as it's developed, it's gone from physical to energetic to mental, emotional and, and highly spiritual. And one of the things that I haven't said, and I heard this the other day somewhere, 
an attitude of gratitude is not a platitude. Don't you just love that? Shall I say that again? An attitude of gratitude is not a platitude. I just love that. Because if I open my mind enough to be grateful for everything in my life, then I'm in a place of healing for myself. And then I've got enough energy to put out. And I know through uh, years of working in, um, you know, with my own codependence and my own healing journey, is that one thing I ever forgot to do is put my own oxygen mask on before I was healing all you guys. And then I would burn out. And I would burn out because I was a little martyr, healing everybody else, and don't worry about me. Trauma, that's trauma. That's trauma right there. If you don't see your trauma, uh, let me help you heal that trauma. Let me help you see that trauma and, and work with it. And I do believe today that through the work I've done, and I'm sure there's many of me about, probably in this room alone, is, is we have done enough work in this so that we can hold the space safely. And we may start the first two years of your healing with just looking at your cells. Are you drinking enough fluids? We've talked about that in part one. Are you eating the right food season ge geographic? We talked about that in part two. And, um, and today it's all about once we've done that and we've healed the cell, um, and we've got you sleeping and your energy's a little bit better and your general health and aches and pains are starting to, um, to, to heal. Now we, now we are ready for the next stage. You know that yourself as healers, when we're healing out here um, and you feel that push and sometimes you get all the way here. I don't know how you would talk, but you know, I was on the NFSH and, 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 and I've probably forgotten it. And it's a bit like driving, isn't it? You learn to drive a car the way they want you to look signal maneuver and then you don't do any of that. So this is the way I work, but I mean, I, how, if I'm there, I'm like, well, this is a physical thing I'm working on. But if I'm way over here, I'm like, ooh, we got a spiritual sickness. And uh, not that it's my job to judge anyone for being spiritually sick, but we'll say a spiritual, something that needs healing spiritually. And uh, yeah, so there's no questions. So that means that I have covered everything you could possibly. Oh, there is a lady. Oh, Lynn, please unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, a I'll ask a question. <laughs> and I think it might be helpful for so many people that, that can relate to um, trauma around the maternal relationships. And I've had it from um, my mother. I was adopted, so that was a trauma. I had traumas with my adopted mother. I've passed it on to my son. And now I've got a daughter-in-law who's got maternal trauma. And I feel, you know, that I went like that and it felt like black spikes in my head when it came to that um, discomfort around um, her reaction to me. She just doesn't speak to me. And I'm nice. I don't know why, you know. But I feel like I'm at a complete and pass. I don't, I just don't know what way to turn. Um, one of my sons has shown an interest in doing some ancestral healing around, um, you know, like maternal abandonment. Um, but I, I just don't know the next step to take. Um, so the oxygen mask comes to mind is that what step you take is not um not healing anyone else other than yourself um and doing some work on yourself because we only have this possibility of healing our lives not the people around us we just can't we we have to start it, it's sort of a it's almost like um what's what is that uh, that i'm trying to say you know that's something that emanates um, so it's a thought, isn't it? It's the butterfly wings. You know, we, we, we are what we think. And so many of us are aligned to a, a lot of thinking um, that, of course, good thoughts as well. We want to heal other people. But when we're looking to heal other people, it's because we might benefit from looking inwards first and, and healing ourselves. And I'd love to look at that warning. I'd love to look at that and work with that because that would be... You know, there's a lot of guilt and shame about being a mother, isn't there? Goodness me, I mean, no happens, does it? But um, mm -hmm. you know, guilt and shame for lots of things. But um, um, 
there's no harm in there's no harm in those feelings either there's absolutely you know it's it's we'd want to um i was just reading something about um ancestral healing um linda uh, i was writing something about other people's cultures because the lovely lynn brody has encouraged me to get into cruise counseling and learn to be a bereavement counselor so this training never ends because it's been a real eye opener because I'm a fixer and a talker and I've got all the solutions and in breathing cancer, you don't do any of that. You just listen. I'm like, oh, this is a new skill, new skills, another skill set just to listen. So, but, it, but of course for you, uh, Lynn Gray, we would be wanting you to listen to yourself for listening. Uh, and then, and then, so the lovely Linda, uh, had suggested that for the other culture that I um, write about the Day of the Dead. And one of the things that the Day of the Dead do as a cultural uh, norm for um, uh, bereaving is that they celebrate and then they give thanks to their ancestors and they sit and talk about their ancestors. We don't do that in our culture, generally speaking, do we? So. I guess what I, try, I would try to say is if we want to help you, Lynn Crane, uh, we would perhaps start with healing your own, rather than thinking of healing your son and wanting your daughter-in-law to, 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 to accept you, is to start healing your backstory so that we heal you. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Um, it's only that Lynn's story very much um, resonated with my own. Can you hear me? Uh, hang on, hang on. That's my microphone. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear. You. Yeah, it's a bit scratchy. Okay, but... sorry. I've got very bad Wi-Fi. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Um, no, Lynn's resonated with mine because I too was adopted, and not only was I adopted, but I was adopted by, by a, one particular parent, my mother, who was absolutely horrible, and so I went through a lot of you know masses and masses of, of that sort of the similar I'm sure similar stuff so what I then found I was trying to do was to overcompensate with my own three children to make their lives so much better than mine and to give and to overdo the love situation so in the end it comes back to bite you because you then suffer terrible trauma from the fact that you're perhaps being rejected by your own children in that they want their own lives so it's something that really you're, you're, you're having to work through continuously um, and it's your own story, not uh, their story. And it's so in, very difficult. I mean, in the last year I've had a, my younger son with, with uh, terminal cancer, um, my daughter had cancer. And so all the time I'm wanting to heal them, I, you know, my whole healing ethos okay i'm a reiki master teacher and sort of bits and bobs but i you know you then overdo it to the extent that you yourself then become ill <laughs> so it's it's a very very i mean i know everybody has their own story but i i can see exactly how you know how how she is or how lynn's possibly going through that sort of thing yeah I, I, and it makes complete sense where you've become a reiki master and um, I love the word overcompensation because I think that's kind of what we what we do, isn't it? Um, you know, we try and give our kids what we didn't have, and uh, look where we are with that. So um, I, I was just thinking, though, I was thinking, um, you know how like people, my mum's age, so she'd be in her eighties. You know how the elderly say things like they get to a certain age, and uh, I've a, my oldest client's about ninety three, and she says to me, "I just, I just, I'll just keep carrying on." I'll just, I'll just keep going, she says. And I think, whilst that's absolutely amazing, that is, if you like, the ultimate of, of trauma. I don't know how this connects in, in I'm, getting to your, I'm getting to back onto you here, because I think I'm gonna go around it this way rather than that way. But anyway, um, the idea that we just keep carrying on, that we just keep stiff upper lipping and just keep carrying on, that's what that generation were fabulous at because they were so traumatized, that's all they had. Our generation has the opportunity to go, hold on a minute, we don't just have to be a, a, a reflection of our traumatic past, i.e. adoption is, I mean, I love stories of, adopt, of people who adopted because they may say, well, I don't know my ancestors. Then there's all more interesting work to do because I don't know who my ancestors were either. Uh, you know, the family tree has an end, doesn't it, for lots of us. 
uh, and some of it ends sooner than others. So I think there's still this need for healing, but instead of just carrying on and stiff upper lipping it, we can and we we can we can actually learn to find a way to help ourselves. And it's the wounded healer again. It's that who it's the healer heal thyself story, isn't it? And and of course you now see that what you've done with your children, and God forbid you start feeling guilty for that overcompensation because you didn't know, you didn't know, you did the best you could and we're always doing the best we can. So now it's maybe your time, Jenny, to um, work instead of giving to everybody else as your Reiki mastership would, 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 would be. I know we do self Reiki and, and such like, but maybe we yes. need more than, than Reiki, maybe we need more than, more than energetic healing. You see, I find there's a limit to all these healings, which is why I've done so many because each time I did one, it had its limit. So I did another one, it had its limit. And we're yes, well, I, I did EFT, which is tapping. And then, you know, sort of that, that's in my past because I've now realized that, I mean, this is why I found so much help from Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary because just going on to the daily meditation, one minute meditations every day and uh, attending these things, um, you can sit back and actually kind of. Um, assess where you are, where you are, and the fact that you know we can't just keep battling and battling and battling against brick walls, which I think a lot of us do. Yes, and I think even with the healing minute, we are still giving out, aren't we? But then, it, in my case, I, that's how I've, I I want to give, <laughs> and I suppose it's because I haven't got in the first place. And I think that's, that's, you know, possibly the root of a lot of people who do healing. That's trauma. Mm. You're talking about trauma. Mm. And you're talking about the trauma that is felt in every cell of our bodies that we, 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 we want to investigate when it feels safe enough to do so, which is why we do it with someone who can hold that space, why we do it with somebody we end up trusting. And, uh, and, and, and in a way, if we don't do it, we've kind of lost a beautiful opportunity. Not, notwithstanding, we can go into that elderly pattern, uh, like I say, people like my elderly client is that we just have to keep on going because we just have to keep on going. That's trauma. We don't have to just keep on going. We can stop and, and find a different way. And at any age, at any time, at any period of our life or juncture of our life, we can stop and say, even with a healing minute, my tutor, one of my tutors, I used to work in um, Clapham Spiritualist Church, and there was this whole guy, I think he, his healer number still, uh, my healer number has five numbers, I think, his had four, so that shows you how long he'd been a healer for, and uh, he used to say, whenever you do the healing, Julie, always nick a bit for yourself, and I thought, <laughs> oh, and that's held me in good stead, because before I do the healing minute, I make sure I'm asking that I'm okay before I go out. And I've learned that that's that oxygen mask, Jenny. And so many of us have let that oxygen mask slip where we've pushed our boundaries. Because the thing with trauma, one of the things that I've learned in trauma is that we don't have boundaries because we don't know when to say no, because we're either people pleasing, overcompensating, as you mentioned, we're trying to fix everybody else because we don't know how to fix ourselves because we don't even often even recognize we're broken. Remember, we are the crack that let the light in. But if we ignore those cracks and try and keep papering over them, we're not gonna let any light in. And in order to let the light in, we also have to let it out. It's a two way street, you know? So I would say to you, Jenny, um, everything you've done in order to help other people, it's now time to turn that back it's your time to perhaps turn it back and heal your ancestral ancestral past. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Uh, to, to have the possibility and oh gosh, where do we start? And so it feels so overwhelming so we don't start. Somebody said to me the other day, um, there's this, is it an acronym when you have a, a, a word, you know, like fear, F-E-A-R, uh, false evidence appearing real uh, or false, what is it? False. There's another way for saying it. Anyway, but you, you, but there's another acronym, and it's and it's denial. Most of us don't heal because we're in denial, and that's not an uh, that's not um um and denial. You know, this is sounds good as I'm really rude, but denial could stand for didn't everybody notice I always lied. 
And what that what what I would say that means is that that you know we're in denial, not not to be mean or judge it, is because that's all we got. When we're just I'm just keep going on, that's a massive wall of defense and denial because we're so frightened to let that crack open up so the light can get out. We don't look at it. And that's a traumatized person. And so what we do with that person, which is ourselves, we we, we find our warning and our, and our welcome for a start. And if, we, and if we feel safe enough, we start to do this work on ourselves. And it might just start, I always start with something basic. I start, like Linda was saying about herbs and nutrition. And I start with a few basics. Let's get your cells working. Let's get your body. If we drink enough fluid and we give ourselves 80% of, of, of fluids, our brain will start to function a bit better and we'll start to feel safer because when we're dehydrated, we don't feel safe. When we don't feel safe, we're in fear mode and we don't feel safe when our cells are dying because we're dying. So we start with some of the basics, naturopathic principles, and then it just collectively, gradually, and lots of people leave before the show's over. Lots of people leave before the fat lady sings, but they may not leave before the fat lady sings. They may step back until they feel safe to let another bit of crack open up and another bit of light come in, another bit of light leave. And that's how it is. It's just a process of layers upon layers upon beautiful layers. So if you've done tapping and Reiki, you can do tap and Reiki on yourself and maybe it's time to, to try a new modality. And, and people often will say that one of the denials and defenses that I have come across mostly in my work is people say they can't afford it. And I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. Sorry to swear. And I'll tell you why it is. Because if I was to look at what you eat and how you spend your money, not that it's any of my business, um, I would know that you would have enough money to spend pound fifty a day on your health. I went for a coffee the other day. Do you know how much in Canterbury a coffee was? £4.40. I could have bought a bottle of wine for that. I was like, £4.40? I'd make my coffee at home. Shouldn't be drinking too much of that anyway. One a day, a little bit of what you like. Problem is in this world, we've had a lot of what we like, haven't we? Rather too much of what we like. Look at the sugar world. But anyway, I'm going off on another world. Jenny, I hope and pray that you find healing for yourself. And maybe today has been that inspiration for you to open up that inquiry and let the light in. Thank you. Thank you. Julie, thank you so much for that. that and denial, that, that was such a fantastic thing because, you know, when people ask us, oh, well, how are you? That's the biggest lie, isn't it? We always say, oh, I'm fine. And we say it when we're not. Um, and it's just a very natural response. Oh, I'm fine. And actually, no. And and I, I agree with you. you. You talk about the oxygen mask, but, um, you know, you can't pour from an empty jug. Mm. That's that's what I think. So, you know, you do need to really care for yourselves. So Lynn and Jenny, yeah, absolutely. And we we, we are, we're, we're most of us who, who do any kind of healing work, we, we can be rescuers, you know, we can sort of rush around trying to save everybody else to our own detriment. So, you know, these are hard lessons to learn. So thank you, Julie, for, for, for really homing in on that really really helpful um i i does anybody else have any questions or anything they'd like to discuss with julie or anything that's come up because of this well just share just share your story get it off your chest how's you how's your day going just tell us how your day's going because that will be that's healing isn't it just it's just it. just a comment if nobody's if anybody's got something personally want to discuss with julie but i've just got one comment if nobody has that's all no, I, I belong to something else, which is fascinating. Um, and there was a person there who works with dreams and you and Julie. And she is discovering, because she, she's dealing with so many people, she's discovering that people from all over the place are having the same type of dream at the same time. So we're going back to this collective consciousness of trauma. So it would help people to know that it may not be their own trauma they're, dream they're dreaming about necessarily, it, because we're all connected anyway. 
And you know, this is a new discovery because it's something they're researching at the moment. I can well believe that because mm. it's um, it's like trauma is of our time now, isn't it? It's yes. what yes. we're talking about. And I met somebody the other day that said, oh, I never had any trauma in my life. I had an idyllic childhood. Mum and dad showered me with gifts. I, every Christmas, holidays, we had everything and there was no trauma. Mm. And I was kind of like, not that it's my business to find people's trauma, but I said, oh, that's great then. Okay, so I'm wrong. We're not all traumatized. Okay. And then a little while later, as that crack opened and the light came in and the light mm. came out, it was like, I don't know what feelings are. I don't know how to feel angry or frightened. I'm a big, tough guy. Mm. And uh, and there it is. There's yeah. the trauma. Not yes, I always get suspicious with my counselling. I was, you know, when somebody says, oh, my father was wonderful, my mother was wonderful. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, yes. <laughs> but you know, you know straight away that they're just completely in denial. It's very sad. But yes, and that eventually, yes, it, it comes out. But I think, don't you think that people say that because they need the help? You know, it's almost like that's all I can say so help me because I know that's not right so it's funny how we communicate without even knowing why we said something it's your body telling you um what you need well I'm I'm really pleased you said that because that was something I um was going to talk about was that you know and I did touch on it is this ex this one sign of trauma is that I'm just showing my strengths yes exactly and and, and you know somebody said to me Oh, you're always going on about trauma. My God, it's so negative. And I was like, no, it's not. It's actually mm -hmm. finally we're we're being honest. Yeah. We're not in D E N I A L anymore. We're mm -hmm. being honest and saying mm -hmm. we're collectively, there is nobody walking this earth that doesn't have some ancestral trauma because of war, surely. Yes. And if you're alive, you need help, whoever you are. Absolutely. And that's the weakness that people don't want to acknowledge, but it benefits them and it's a whirlpool because it benefits all the family and all the friends at the same time. So, Absolutely. And I was looking at this sort of cultural reframing. So instead of the British stiff upper lip, I was thinking mm. of cultural reframing of um, what it means to be human and, and how every one of the people that I work with are basically suppressing what is difficult because yes. that's, that's yes. how it's hard. It's a and depressions, of... depressions, as we know, can go into the physical body and can come out as a physical illness. So, and, you know, talking of that, you know how there's this sort of sense that the body, I think we did it in part one of, of one, one of, uh, part one of my talk was to look at the healing power of illness. And so we look at what's wrong and we investigate that. But today I wanted to take it to, what are we not investigating? We all know that our arthritis is a deep seated, whatever, or our cancer is, or da, 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 that, whatever it means to each of us, it could be well different. Um, but we don't look at the numb unseen part. And that's mm -hmm. the bit I want to look at today. That's, that's the interesting bit. And it's mm -hmm. interesting because saying that in, um, in Shiatsu, which is Japanese, we talk about the, the, um, the Kyo and the Jitsu. And in um, Chinese medicine, we talk about the excess and the, um, the lack. And so Kyo is the lack, and Jitsu is the excess. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and so that has the same the same thing of what I've just what would have just said just said there. If we look at the bit that isn't there, because often all this on the outside, the Japanese and the Chinese have known about this for five thousand years. So mm -hmm. patch up Europe, mm -hmm. patch up, <laughs> or, go, or go back, as you said about the Western world being compartmentalized with on a flow chart on a computer. You know, it's mad. Yeah. It's coming, it is coming, Julie. It, there's so much going on now about um, con the level of consciousness rising and it's quite an exciting time because it's almost like that's going to happen whether people like it or not. So then people are starting, I've noticed a lot um, more this year than last year where people are connecting with themselves much more and wanting and inquiring and um, it, it's just it's, it makes me quite emotional because I think it's just so essential for the world. Yeah, mm. yeah, and I think it's it, it, it will cut it will it will it will hit the, those of us that that need to hear it 
and it hits us when we need to hear it. It, it is layers, isn't it? We look at layers as they come up and we can only work with what we've got. But the one thing we must do is keep, and I hate the word work, so let's not call it work, shall we? we, we, we service. service. Yes. <laughs> Oh, don't you just love it? I mean, what is the purpose if we're not here for this? We have exactly. to. Otherwise, we're just, we're just, you know, what are we going to do? Live and die yeah. and that's a lot. Earn some money, spend some money. Well, you come, you come in on the the vibration of love, and then you learn to exist without love, or the right kind of love, and then you have to heal yourself. And I think well, it benefits you to heal yourself because usually that's why you've come in, in the first place. So your soul learns the next level. And the wisdom of grief is compassion. Beautiful. And to be compassionate and um, have gratitude is, is, is the best, are the best two things you can have towards yourself and other people. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And you know, you could sum up every single talk that anybody gives with one word love. Yes. Love, 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 love. Yes, right, right. Yeah. But it's how do we get that? And, and this is where I think that, you know, um, how, how, you know, when we split off our energy, so we'll hear that and we'll go, oh, yeah, 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 love yourself. And, you know, and then we'll split, we'll watch something on television, we'll, we'll, we, we'll be deemed over there into that negative framework of what's happening uh, in the world, perhaps another war, blah, blah, blah. And, and when it's that splitting off of energy and where that's getting stored in our body. And which is why I think my work is really about trying to be skilled enough mm. to hone in on that um, uh, and heal that inner condition. And, and that's where I feel that all of, for me, there's a limitation to every single modality, which mm. is why I collate them. Um, because it, it is not just, it's very easy to say, yes, love is the answer, but how do we get to love if we've been given away at birth or we've got, you know, uh, how do we, how, it, that's, 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 that's the key. I think, I think it's accepting. You can't actually change it, but you can accept it and live a better life from tomorrow and appreciate what you have got not what you haven't got this what i think it's the scales isn't it to putting taking stuff that's weighing down the left scale and putting it evenly not forgetting what you've gone through but turning it into a positive mm. so that you are able to show compassion to others because you under, you don't understand them because we've all got our own dna and our own fingerprints and it's their journey not ours but you can relate to them more if you get to the stage where you're not carrying around the grief and the trauma um, too much. I would, I would agree that acceptance, mm. uh, but for, for me, sometimes uh, acceptance means we don't get to explore as well, because I think those preformed patterns, um, mm. I think they need to be explored so we can lift the veil. If we don't lift that veil, we can't yes. integrate, we can't integrate. Yeah. And, and that's, um, so sometimes we rush, I know that in bereavement, I, I would rush to get to acceptance, forgiveness and quickly move on. And that's it. I'm cured now. I'm not breathing anymore. <laughs> and that would be my way because I want to tick that box quickly. Tick, 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 tick. On with the next because I, you know, that's yeah. just, uh, but you have to discover it. You're quite right. I mean, I was referring to when you've done all that. Uh, yes. <laughs> and, and you have to do that. It yeah, always benefits yeah. you to do that because otherwise you can't accept it because you don't understand it. Absolutely. You don't understand the pain. So um, if you can do the work, it's just so invaluable to do that. And it, it, it lightens you as a person. So yes. can I can I say that in my experience, acceptance and agreement often get bound up together mm. and not at all the same thing. Mm. Um, so and it took me quite a long time to to understand that I could accept something had happened, but I was never ever going to agree with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that you know we we do sometimes tie those yeah. things together. You can you can accept the person, but not forgive the sin, the deed, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Because then you then you it strengthens you. You know, I think that's quite right. So one of the things we learn in trauma is um, we often get stuck in our storyline. So, uh, you know, I, I see that as that, that narrative, that, that pain narrative, you know, I've got this pain or I suffer headache or 
whatever it is that we've said, uh, it, it becomes our storyline. Yes. It's, not become our, it's our storyline and it's set in concrete. It's very mm. hard to unlock that. And, and I think we, that's, that's where the work starts. We can let those cracks of those light come in. And that's, that's what you, mm. you can see. That's the lovely, the lovely saying, yes. And that's the trick. So if I leave you one thing today, it will be, it will be, I just get my little postcard. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I should have called today. Blessed are the cracked for yes. they let in the light, and that's us. Thank right. God, that's us. Yeah. So I, I can't thank you enough, Julie. It's been a, a, a marvelous morning. I know a couple of people have just put in the chat because they they couldn't say any longer but they they were incredibly grateful for the for the talk so I've just seen that in the chat so just before we stop the recordings and the live stream do you, can you just share your contact details verbally so anybody watching on yes. Facebook later knows how they can contact you yeah, um, of course. I've, a, I've a very old website that doesn't really um uh cover everything I do um and it's www ConsciousHealth.info. Conscious is C O N S C I O U S, health, one word, dot info. And if you'd like to call me, WhatsApp me, text me, I'm Julie Berg, as in Iceberg or Goldberg. And it's 07545 803 280. So it's 07545 eight zero three two eight zero and i welcome anyone that wants to um yes indeed um i didn't do my big sales pitch on the herbs enough though did i no. you know, these amazing <laughs> herbs amazing herbs because i would say that but linda's testament to it and uh, somebody rang me yesterday to say um can I have another bottle of your herbs? And she wasn't even a client. A client had bought her a bottle and given her a bottle. And I was like, well, you're meant to actually have a little bit of a consultation before we make herbs for you because you could be on all sorts of medications. But these immune herbs are quite generic. So some are for tickly coughs, some are for phlegmy coughs, some are just for an immune um, booster. And around the flu season time and the cold season time, what 10 mil won't do for you? And if you're sick, of course, we suggest you drink the whole bottle over a period of time, of course, not, not, over, not in one night. <laughs> and for those of you that can't take alcohol, we put them into boiling water to disperse the alcohol if anyone's got an allergy to alcohol. So, yeah, come and get some herbs. I will post them to you should you, should you ever need them. But ring me, please. And yes, I do have herbs for menopause <laughs> and everything else in between. <laughs> thank you so much, Julie. Thank you. So um, I think Julia can hear us so Perhaps we'll stop the recording and live stream now. Um, next, Signals Cafe on the 3rd of November. So we'll hopefully see you back in the Signals room then. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. So we'll go into...